Hi everyone and welcome back. If you ever wondered why your mixes don't sound as loud as the commercial songs on the radio or on Spotify or any other music platform, there could be several reasons. Of course, the obvious one is that commercial release songs are most likely mastered by professional mastering engineers. Still, even after you master your song, with adding compression on the channels as well as on the buses, limiting it, pushing it really hard. You get the minus 14 LUFS, but still, they don't sound as loud as the commercial release songs. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you another trick you can use to get your songs a little bit louder. Of course, that is without over compressing and taking the whole life out of your song. Matter of fact, these techniques might, might allow you to even ease back on your compression. Here I have a project that I've just loaded, and none of the tracks have any plugins. And they go to the buses, and only plugins are delays and reverbs, no compression at all. I'm going to demonstrate how to achieve this. I've got my loudness meter. Let's put it there. And I've got my limiter found in Cakewalk. It's called the Boost 11. Let's point that there. And the boost will actually just give 4 dB of boost. Possibly no gain reduction. Maybe maximum no more than 1 dB. And my output ceiling is minus 1 dB. And then I have TDR Nova as an EQ. As I mentioned, I'm going to show you how you can achieve extra loudness with simple EQ curve. So let's have a listen part of the song and measure in Yulin loudness meter its integrated loudness level. Okay, we have about 19.1 LUFS. This is my general mix, no plugins. It's just balance mix. So let's add our limiter and listen again. And we have minus 15.2 LUFS. Little bit of boost. Again, no gain reduction. Usually, when I apply a limiter to my mixes as a final limiter, I try to make sure that it does not do any gain reduction. This way, I have the most headroom for my mastering engineer. Next, I'm going to turn on and off the TDR Nova. I've only chosen TDR Nova because it's a free and great EQ plugin. While I turn it on and off, have a listen, see if you can hear any loudness difference. Even though you will hear a little bit louder, but technically you won't be getting any louder. It's just a perception. Could you hear that subtle difference in loudness? We're still getting 15.1 LUFS, so minus 15 LUFS, but our ears would have perceived that while the TDR Nova EQ plugin is on, the song is louder. Why is that? 
Well, let's have a look at the EQ curve that I have set as a final master bus EQ. There we are, that's the EQ curve. And this is the EQ curve I use quite often on my mixes, on the main bus. I have a high pass filter, a low pass filter, and a little bit of boost around the mid frequencies. Our ears perceive loud at the most sensitive range, and our ears are sensitive between 300 hertz and about 3.5 to 4 kilohertz or thereabouts. So if any audio is loud at that section, our ears will perceive that the song or the sound is louder. Now, as to high pass filter, I have a high pass filter at 52 hertz or around 50 hertz with 12 dB octave slope. You're probably going, well, you're just killing all the bass. Not really. If we have a look at it, at 50 hertz, it's minus 3 dB, and then minus 6 dB is about 40 hertz, and minus 9 dB is about 30 hertz. It's not much of a reduction, but it's getting rid of all the low frequency audio that your speaker may not be able to produce it, and even if it did, you wouldn't be able to hear it. And especially in this genre of music, there's nothing there other than rumble. That's an energy that we want to get rid of. Let's have a listen and have a look at the spectrum at the low frequency when I buy, when we are looking at in the incoming audio. Right, all that frequency energy at the bottom is wasted. It's going to cause a lot of the energy in your LUFS but producing nothing in the end result. Let's look at the output. That means after we apply the high pass filter. As you can see, and possibly hear, how the kick is still there, but all the energy above 10 hertz, 10 to between 10 and 20 hertz, is no longer there. It's gone. Same goes with the upper frequencies. I have a low pass filter there, about 16 kilohertz at 12 dB slope. You're probably going, 16 kilohertz, that's low fi Not really, it's not low fi The average age person, anywhere between 30, 40 year old, won't be able to hear anything above 16 kilohertz. And 20 kilohertz is about minus 6 dB, or minus 5 dB. So you're not really getting rid of it but you're getting all of those harmonics above 16 kilohertz that no one's going to be able to hear it unless you've got really great hi-fi system and it's going to annoy the dog, seriously. But that's all of that energy that you don't really need. Though tiny bit, but still an energy. On the, our logrammatic scale, we can see tiny bit. Can we let this slip away? Slipping through my hands Darkness, day. Right, it's tiny bit, but we are looking at logarithmic scale. Still a lot of energy that we can get rid of. And as to the mid frequency boost, it's content dependent. Just boost about one and a half to two dB, sweep it around to see what the best sounding frequency is, because you can get a little bit brittleness and grittiness, because most of the energy is there vocal, guitars, you don't want to boost too much, but just tiny bit to attract your ear and make the song sound louder than without it. And that's pretty much it. If you disagree with me, you're most welcome to. Use the comment section below to explain your point, why having a high pass is not a good idea, or having a, a low pass at 16 kHz is not a really good idea. You shouldn't really boost around I think uh, in this case 2.6 kilohertz. We should really reduce, you know, 200 or 300 hertz where the muddy frequency is. But I tend to agree with this. And most of my clients agree with this. And my mastering engineer, which every now and then I send my songs to to be mastered for my client, agrees with this as well. But feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. Again, to get your song louder, don't compress the life out of your songs. Relax your compression. Use other means to get your song to sound loud. Anyway, that's it for today's video. 
I hope this was helpful. If it was, make sure you give me the thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching and have a great time making music and I'll catch you in the next one.